So our stakeholders, Jessica was our executive sponsor, Jaya was our product owner, and Harshita and Ben aided us throughout the project. As for the UNL team, we had our project manager, Melanie, our tribe lead, Shruti, and Dr. Gopal, and our industry coach, Ben, at Duncan Aviation, and once again, the ConAgra team, Jessica and Jaya. As for the student team, I was the squad lead and product manager, Parker was our development manager, and Ben, Aiden, Daniel, and Caden were developers. So once again, their problem is that they're currently using an external defect management and testing tool that is expensive, lacking in features, and difficult to use. The opportunity we were able to provide was by building an internal application, they can make the tool more customizable and save around $200,000 a year. We also plan for the application to be user-friendly with a streamlined user flow, as not all of their developers actually currently use their tool. Uh, we hoped that this would make it much easier for them to use. And I'll hand it off to Parker for the solution. Yeah, so I'm Parker. I was the dev manager. Um, for the solution built on a high level, it was just a defect management tool. Nothing too fancy. We built it, built it from the ground up. So it's an Angular front end with the .NET back end. Uh, we connect to a SQL database. Nothing too complicated uh, since we did just you know, build everything from the ground up. Right, what you see here is our uh, example front end uh, homepage. Uh, it's just very plain, very basic. This is kind of how they wanted it laid out, where right away, as you go into the application, you have to select some kind of value stream portfolio and product. That's how they uh, kind of organize everything internally within their company. Uh, and then this is the main kind of part, was defects, being able to report defects, work on defects internally in the company. So this is the defect search tool. After you entered a specific uh, value stream portfolio and product combination, you'd be taken to this defect search page. Uh, you can see the links, so that, that takes you to a more detailed page of the defects. And uh, you can add def defect filters uh, as much as you want. You have that little add filter button up top. And you can also import and export any defects uh, from and to Excel files if you want. And you can also, if you have a defect search that maybe you go too often, you can also save that and pull it up whenever you need. Uh, this is just the det detailed defect page that I mentioned from whenever you click the link. Uh, this is what all of the information will come out to. Uh, you can see some information like the defect activity. That's whenever uh, they wanted any field that was changed, that would pop up there showing you what was changed, who changed it. So that was one nice feature. Uh, and you can also see that you can go to the edit view from here. Uh, this is just the submitting a new defect page. Again, pretty much the same thing. Uh, you just enter all the information that you can. Only a couple of these are actually required fields. If you tried to submit and you didn't have a required field entered, then it would, of course, prompt you to enter that before leaving. And uh, Vivian also worked on some hooks that are nice that make sure that if you try to leave the page, it will prompt you and say, are you sure you really want to leave this page? You didn't es essentially submit this defect. So. That was also a, an additional nice touch. Uh, here's just our pretty basic visualization uh, from what I've explained of the website so far. The user submits or selects their value stream portfolio and product combination from the home page. Whenever you want to go to a new defect, defect search, anything like that, you have to go back to the home page and reselect those specific value stream portfolio and product. Uh, they didn't want you to kind of be able to look at anything in the application. So, from there, you can, uh, your VP, VPP information is cached just on the front end side to make it nice and easy to pull down whichever page we go to. And then uh, you can navigate to, for example, the submit defect page. VPP information is uh, just grabbed from the cache and all inputted. And then uh, as you try to input information and fill out that uh, web page that we saw before, the front end will validate it and either display snack bar errors if there was anything wrong, if there wasn't, then it will submit and show you that it's submitting successfully and then take you, I believe, to the, sub, to the defect search page where you can find your newly submitted defect. Uh, this was part of the reporting that they wanted. Uh, we were able to use Power BI to just generate automatic reports from our uh, uh, SQL database. So uh, Daniel, one of our team members, worked pretty heavily on this, and you can just basically pull up any customizable information, anything that you'd want to know about every single defect that's on the website. You can make a graph for it. Uh, this is just the basic user settings page. Uh, they didn't want users to have a ton of 
abilities, but there's still room for growth, of course. Right now, you can just update your basic information, your first name, last name, whatever name you want to show up on every defect. And then uh, any roles that you have, there's, I believe, four or five different roles inside of the application currently with room to grow, uh, such as uh, we have tester, which eventually this application will have a testing feature where you can uh, essentially test certain products on their websites and then submit defects if there's a problem. Uh, and you also have defect reporter. Uh, you have a few other roles, too, that do slightly different things. This would be the admin page. Only the admin can see this. And right now, there's only plans that have one admin. Uh, basically, they control absolutely everything. The user permissions, which we don't see right now, is where you would approve or reject any user role request. User management, you can update any information that you want about a given user. And then you have these last two are just basically extra fields. Uh, so you can add or remove any defect fields as you want or any value stream portfolio product if you want to add a new combination. You can do that here as well if you're an admin. So as for the value we provided, while we weren't able to complete every single thing they laid out at the beginning of the year, um, this is a very good foundation for their developers to continue working on. They should be able to start using the system almost immediately for most of their needs, hopefully being able to phase out their previous tool. We learned that communicating and negotiating aspects of a project are important so that developers and sponsors can be on the same page. As you get further along in the year, you sort of realize it's not as much time as you were originally thinking. So you kind of want to be on the same page about what the most important aspects of your project are. And we learned that planning ahead is important, laying out what you hope to accomplish from week to week, and also having a semester overview of what features you want to accomplish each semester. Thank you, everyone. Any questions? You want to start? I think I got like a lot of technical experience. So, like, uh, we worked with Angular, and I was mainly on the front end, and I had never worked with that before. So, um, there's that, and then also just like just the process of working on a team in general, and also since I was the squad lead, communicating with your sponsors, um, I didn't have any experience with before. So, yeah, lots of experience. Yeah, I would say for me, uh, the front end is an area I don't usually work with. Right now, I'm a software development intern over at Sandhills. I work a lot in C Sharp and F Sharp there in the .NET stack. So uh, I was pretty familiar with most of the back end, although I haven't set up uh, things like SMTP email services before, logging. So that was pretty new, but it was nice to learn uh, a nice, or at least somewhat learn, Angular on the front end. I think that was, since it's widely used now, I, at our job at Sandhills, we use mainly Knockout, which is a pretty old uh, framework and just plain JavaScript and HTML. So uh, that was a pretty big difference. Definitely layout requirements uh, more so. There was quite a few times that I know we've invented to you uh, after the meetings or uh, about changing requirements. Say, uh, maybe one week with defects, we thought uh, anyone could submit a defect from any valuation portfolio product combination. And then the next week, it's very locked down, maybe. Uh, so just kind of nailing out and getting those requirements set in stone right away, uh, getting everyone on the same page, that was kind of a problem that we faced. Um, I'd probably say pretty much the same thing, especially when you're uh, sp splitting your team up like how we did to like more back end and front end. It's uh, very important to lay those out so that you know the back end is uh, sure about what the front end wants and like back and forth like that.